12. Find the distance from 4, negative 2, 6 to each of the following. The xy plane, the yz plane, the xz plane, the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So let's start with the a. The xy plane. So we know the xy plane is when z equals 0. So we can write it kind of like x, y, 0. And x and y can equal anything. They can equal 1, 2, 3, 4. They're not bounded at all. So with this in mind, we can compare this to our point 4, negative 2, 6. And since these two points, the x and the y component, don't matter, we can just look at the z component, which is 6. And we know that 6 is 6 away from 0, or the xy plane. So we can say that this is 6 units, six units away from the xy plane. That's the distance. All right, so for B, we have the yz plane. So this happens when x equals 0. And y and z, as before, are, can be any points. doesn't matter. As long as x equals 0, it's on the yz plane. So compared to our original point, and we can see that these two points don't matter at all. So we just want to look at the x component which is 4, and 4 is 4 units away from 0, so that's the distance, 4. We'll say 4 units because it doesn't specify anything else. See, we have the xz plane, and that happens when y is 0, and x and z can be equal to anything. So compared to our original point, just like before, the x and z component do not matter, so we can just compare it to the y. And since negative 2 is 2 away from 0, when I say 2 away, I'm referring to the absolute value or magnitude because distance can't be negative. So we have two units. So now try to think of how could you represent the d axis by the x axis for part d in uh, points that are bounded and not bounded. So if you got that x was bounded, not, not bounded, and the y and z components had to equal 0, you got it right. So x can equal anything, but as long as the y and z equal 0. So instead of having one value that we need to compare to find the distance, we have two. So this requires the, the formula, distance formula for two, two components x minus x1 squared plus y minus y1 squared. And these x's and y's don't correspond to these. Well, here, I can make them correspond. Instead of being x, we can just make this z. But these just represent two points that are away. So we have the 4, negative 2. Let's, let me do this in a different color. Let's do this entire problem in a different color. Because x can be anything, we're just looking at the 2, negative 2, and 6 at this point. So we're just looking at these two. And we're comparing it to 0, 0. So we have the d equals 6 minus 0 squared plus negative 2 minus 0 squared which equals square root of 36 plus 4, square root of 40, that equals 2 root 10. So now let's go on to part E, which is the y-axis. And the y-axis can be bounded by 0, y, 0, y being any point, and this creates the y-axis. So just like earlier, we used the distance formula for x and z. So rather than this being z and this being y, we're going to just use x and z. So we have the distance equals 4 minus 0 squared plus 6 minus 0 squared. This equals square root of 16 plus 36 
the square root of 52. See if you can simplify this at all. 2, 26, 2, and 13 equals 2 root 13. Then for the final part, F, we have the z-axis, which can be represented by 0, 0, z, z being any number. And just to write it down again, our point is 4, negative 2, 6. And we're just going to keep comparing the x and y component. So we can say the distance, square root of 4 minus 0 squared plus negative 2 minus 0 squared, which equals 4 squared, 16, negative 2 squared, which is 4, square root of 20. We get 4 and 5 equals 2 root 5. So these are the three distance. These are all the six distances. Six for A, four for B, two for C, two root ten for D, two root thirteen for E, and two root five for F.